All right, guys. We're going to start the GT40 three bar. Now, I didn't realize I had a question before on which GT40 it was. It seems there's a 302 and a 351. They got different size head bolts, right? So this is, I can't even read that. F37EAA head. And the man that sent these to me wants to put them on a 351 and then basically bolt it into a skateboard. So we'll see what we can do with these. Um, as you can tell, this one's already had some work. It's had a first rough out on the intake. It's had the uh, the chamber got a little bit of a cut, not much. Valve sizes were were brought up to a 194 with a 45 degree seat. I, for the life of me, couldn't tell whether this has a seat in it or not, so I didn't worry about it. It definitely has an exhaust seat, no question about it. And unfortunately, the exhaust seat is a touch off. I don't know if you can see that. But on the top right corner, the, the uh, 45 goes right to the edge. And this corner, you can see some black. So will be going for a 1.6 on there, but it's going to fit a little, there's going to be a little bit more valve overhang than I'd like, but not a big deal. Okay. Okay, here we got the stocker. And yes, there's all kinds of garbage in the port. Um, some of that little bit of stuff stuck to the sides is from the port molds, but there were it was one port, actually the one that I that I uh, started porting. They must have dropped. They must have dropped the mold when they were assembling it, because the roof had at least an extra hundred thousands of really nasty jaggy iron like that, but way way worse. So it was three hundred and fifty thousands thick on the roof. These are nice and heavy castings. These are as heavy as the GT40Ps and the E7s. They, they got a lot of metal on them. I don't know how uniform it is as far as being thick. And you can see that this intake port is similar to the GT40P as far as the cylinder wall being kicked out, but not as radical, right? It's got a little bit different boss. It's got it's got a different uh, top cut. This has got a 20 degree top cut from Ford, which I thought was interesting, which actually I kept. I kept that 20 degree cut. I wanted to see how it worked. I can't get a focus on it to save my life today. Okay. All right. All right, the intake port is very similar to an E7, but it does have that kick out in the bowl. Other than that, the roof looks pretty much identical. The left wall looks almost identical, and even the floor, which was the roof in this place, is nearly identical. The short side radius is a touch different, but uh, it really is a mix between uh, an E7 port and a GT40P port. GT40P port is definitely wider at the bowl. Alright, here's the untouched one. You can see I opened up the pinch. I opened up the pinch a decent amount. You can tell that's definitely a little tighter. Come on. Pretty tight pinch on these. I was actually surprised. I mean, I did some work on the pinch and then calculated it and only would only flow 228 after I opened it up quite a bit. 
Okay, you can see the floor. Short side radius is quite flat. Right? Does not does not kick out as much as GT40Ps. But it's not it's not a terrible looking port. Okay, the one I did some work to. Like I said I brought the pinch out a little bit. Actually, I brought the pinch out quite a bit. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I can probably take some more out of the straight wall. But it took a decent amount out of that. You can see I did a little work to the short side radius. But in reality, it was basically cleaned up. And the bowl had a lot of junk removed. And then I brought it out to the new seat. So the bowl is not huge. The bowl towards the roof is relatively stock size and it flares out to the bigger the bigger valve okay the exhaust got a decent work over you can see I banged it up to a 1.6 valve I did my radius I kept the throat tight because I don't want to don't want to make that uh, insert too small but I like a tight throat anyway you can see I brought the outside wall out a little bit I didn't take a huge amount off of the boss because uh, it's basically a cleanup. I want to see what, what a cleanup in a bigger valve is going to do. So that's what we did. Okay, it doesn't look radically different than the stocker, right? You can see the valve's a little bit smaller. Now these have different size valves than the GT40Ps. These come with 185s. 1.54, same as uh, Windsor. Same as a Windsor 351, anyway. The GT40Ps have the smaller exhaust valve. They have the 1.85 intake and 1.46 exhaust. But the exhaust port on the GT40P is a better shape. It's definitely a better shape than these. Okay, the stocker. It's just like the intake port. It really is. It's half of an E7 and half of a GT40P. It's right between them both. Now, I don't believe these are drilled for the EGR. Let me check that. Yeah, these are not, they're not drilled. Those are, those are blind holes. So, if you really wanted to, you could raise this quite a bit, this port. Uh, I'm probably going to keep them stop, stock exhaust uh, outlet sizes. I know what, I know what to do to get uh, some decent flow out of these. It won't be a problem. Alright, let's see how, uh, let's see how completely stockers versus the first cut did. Okay. Okay, first two columns on the left are bone stock. I did not have a 1.54 inch valve. I just stuck a GM 1.5 in there. And it fit on the seat perfectly, but it has less shrouding. So I got a feeling those exhaust numbers are better than they usually would be. The intake numbers look pretty darn close to me. That, that was that was a, a neck down manly valve for the intake. Okay, and far right, we've got first cut intake with the 194 and first cut with the 1.6. So they've had bigger valves installed and they've had their first cleanup port. So if you take a look, from intake to intake, going down, up, 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 it's all pot pluses. The whole thing is up. And at 300, we go from 174 to 181.2. Not bad. 500, we go with 189.9 to 215. That's only, that's about what I was getting out of the fully done up E7s. So these don't have nearly as much work on them. Uh, 600 is 193.6, which is 217 and change. 
okay? Not bad for a first cut. Now, these do have bigger ports than an E7. E7 is only on like 127 cc's. These are more like 140, I think. Okay, take a look at the exhaust. Far right verse, second column. At uh, 0.05, we actually lost some flow. After that, we gained all the way down. Didn't gain nearly as much as I expected it to. I mean, if you look at 300, it's 122.1 versus 138.5. That's a decent jump. Go to 500, you got 140.7 to 154.6. I thought it should have been higher than that. So, the exhaust needs quite a bit of work still. And I forgot to use the pipe on the the stocker. All right, have patience with me. This is going to be tough to do. All right? This is actually the port that he did the mold on. Okay. Let me see if I can move my hand a little bit. You can really see the dog leg on that, right? It was right between the push rod holes. Let me take a look at the port sideways. Short side radius doesn't look that bad on this. It really doesn't look that terrible. All right? It does have got a, a dent right here that we probably shouldn't have but that lines up with the port bias you can see the port bias let's see if we can put this okay and you can see the port bias right they both both walls angle towards the center of the cylinder and that's completely stock right you can see the bowl, right, the way it's kicked out on, on this side, makes a big difference right here. Look at how that's kicked out. That's nice. Now, the GT40Ps are kicked out even more than that. Trouble is, most of the air wants to come around this tight corner here. Okay? And by just cutting that corner deeper, you actually reduce the radius on that corner. So that's that's a little tricky on small block boards. So that's going to have your highest speed. Your speeds get less as you go across the port. So blowing this side out more and more has less and less of an effect, really. Okay, You can see how tiny the, uh, the pinch is on this. Really, it's really small. Right. Let's take a look at the exhaust. Okay, the exhaust is like so. You can see you can see how radically angled that is, right? Biased. This is actually the the machined cut, right? When they do the valve job, they also machine this cut in the bowl, almost like a bowl hog, right? Let's see if you guys can see that. Move my light. There you go. You can see that bowl cut, right? Then you can see that huge boss. Molds really are co really are cool. I'm glad this guy sent me some molds. He's going to uh, send me some info on uh, how to do these. Short side radius is really nice. Just that I think the outlet of the port should have been shrunk. It should have been more more like that. <laughs> right, Ra raise that bottom up. It would have just worked better. And you know why? Take a look. Let's take a look at our, our speeds. Now these are these are speeds from my first cut, right? And overall the speeds on the exhaust are not terrible. Except for the 
center on the bottom where it was bouncing between 0 and 84. So as far as the top of the port, it's got it's got a decent handle on it, right? All 300 plus. Middle of the port, not bad. And the bottom of the port needs some serious work. As far as our air speeds for our first cut on the intake port, pinch is decent speed all the way through. Remember, I already opened this pinch up quite a bit. So that's going to get faster as I get more air through the port. All right, center of the cylinder on the roof has got a lot more velocity than the cylinder wall side. So that needs work. And the way it sits right now, I did work some work on the short side radius. It's relatively fast around that tight corner, right? 4, 412 and change is pretty damn quick. And then as you go to the scalloped out part of the, the port, it drops down to 370. Overall, I think off to a really nice start. Uh, and somebody's going to ask, why did you use 194, 16, and on 45 seats this time? Well, this is a more street oriented 351 style engine. It's it's got to uh, it's going to be in a really light chassis. After I get these cylinder heads flowing, what I know they'll flow. This thing's going to be uh, pretty serious. We'll, we'll have to run that through performance trends and see what uh, what it'll come up with. But if we were pushing 435 on Mikey's little 306, these already flow. That throat flow is good. Now add 50 cubes to it. You know, you're, you're inching on 500 horsepower, and uh, I didn't even do any more work to the heads, right? Give or take a few horsepower. It'll probably come out to like 480 where they sit right now. I don't know. Can you make 480 at 217 CFM? I bet if you know what you're doing, you can. <laughs> In fact, I know. I know you can. All right. Yeah, the combo would have to be spot on. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll bite. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The combo would have to be spot on to make that much power. So I got to do some more work to these. I got to get some valves. Didn't have a chance to order valves today. And for having 800 subs plus, I was thinking of doing a little contest. And let me know if I'm in left field. But I, there's a little, there's a method to my madness. I was thinking of the first guy that can can let me know. And, and send me a set of AFR 165s bare. I'll do the intake ports, exhaust ports, and the chambers for 500 bucks. Put them on the bench. I want to know what they flow stock. That's my, my main my main goal is I need a set to go across the bench to see what they flow stock. And then do a little development work, send them back to somebody, and they'll really fly. Let me know if I'm out of my mind or if that's a good idea. All right, guys. Have a good night.